I also saw that you, like, you asked this question today, I think, to one of the guys, and then you asked it in another video, what's the difference between a class and a struct? Yeah. How would you answer that? Because I know that um, just the easiest thing to think about is the class has functions, and then the struct only has, like, data. But then I got to thinking, like, a little bit little bit deeper. Maybe a struct is, like, at compile time, like, it, every, everything is known about a struct. And a class, whereas it can be, like, changed at runtime. Is that kind of the answer you were looking for, the reason, kind of reasoning? That you were looking for where'd you come up with that i don't i just i i actually had a note saved where it's like an object oriented programming versus non object oriented programming there's a lot something to do with compilation and non object oriented programming whereas an object oriented programming there is um like runtime i think i commented on your video but i it was a quote i read it probably in one of your books i can bring it up uh, no that's definitely not in one of my books it's a, the important distinction between a non-OOP like C and C++ is that in the latter, so like C++, declarations are not passive instructions. Well, I guess this goes to like declarations, not... That has nothing to do with classes, yeah. Okay. So I was thinking about it wrong. But it, it was is the answer you're looking for um, about the functions versus data for classes and structs or no? No, both can have a functions and data. What are you studying in school? Um... I'm working full time and also doing the master's part time. So in school, I'm studying computer architecture. Next semester, I'm taking advanced topics in object oriented programming and C++. So that's I like I never did C++ until I got to the master's. So wow. and I use C at work. I use C embedded systems. like real real time operating systems like embedded systems for helicopters, safety critical software. OK, so how do I allocate memory in C? Uh, you do a system call uh, or a user call malloc. You use your the user library function. You call the user library function malloc, which does a system call to sbreak and it returns memory to you. Um, and you pass in typically the size, how much memory you want, and then you kind of um, I guess you you kind of shape your object or whatever you're allocating in the way you want it, so you can cast it to like a structure. You need to, you definitely need to know the amount of space that you're allocating. So what do, what does what does malloc take in as a parameter? Um, size uh, size t uh, just in size t variable, which would be the size I would imagine. Um, in in what units? It. it like the parameters? Um, well, right, right. Um, can you repeat the question? Yeah, malloc takes in a parameter. Malloc takes in a parameter. You pass it as you pass it something, and then it gives you back something, right? Yeah, isn't there two parameters? You pass in a pointer, the starting address, and the size that you want. Uh, no, there's Are one. You? There's one. Yeah. I I guess it has to be the size t then, like this amount of memory you want. And then the amount of memory in what unit? Si um, an unsigned integer. Yeah, but like, what does that unsigned integer represent? Um, the unsigned integer represents the amount of bytes in memory that you want to return, and it will return to you a pointer to the starting address that it allocates on the heap. And then, what's the type of that pointer? Uh, I will be void. Uh, it will be. Uh, it won't know anything, so it will return a void pointer, and then it's up to the user to kind of cast it. I imagine. I okay. think. But. Okay, and then if you if you want ten, for example, units of memory, ten units of memory, right? And so you're gonna ask malloc for ten. How how many will malloc allocate? Um, it depends on the implementation. I imagine it could implement more, could give you back more, but it will never give you back less. It will always be at least ten. Let, yeah. What 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 is the extra extra space used for? So if you wanted ten and it gives you sixteen. What is the extra space used for? I don't think it will. Um, so basically, the option it will be either. Like what it should do is is kind of give you back ten, but I don't think that's what it does. I think it will give you back sixteen in this case. What I'm thinking of is like the splitting of like, basically. The, there's what malloc does is go to there's a data structure called a free list which organizes blocks of memory that are returned to like malloc calls it return a block of a certain size so um if it returns you a, a block of size 16 um 
it really should try, I think, splitting up that memory into like a block, a smaller block of 10 and then giving and then um, not and then moving that block of six to like another kind of free list, depending on your data structure. But I think um, if my best guess would be that it would it would just be on like after it would just be 10 bytes plus the six, that six bytes will be like, will be kind of fragment fragmented. It won't, it'll be internal fragmentation, one of the two. So let, let me first ask you this, why does malloc need to allocate more than 10? So you asked for 10, but why it, does it need yeah. to allocate at least, like why does it need to allocate more than 10? So the way, what the implementers of malloc like that implemented, they, they, don't, they, don't, they, they don't have a good like, they don't know the use cases like who, like if people are going to be out like how much memory they're trying to like optimize for the general case and so the implementers of malloc decided on a strategy where they would um split up the memory into blocks of like certain sizes um so are, are you I, are you reading something no i'm not reading something i'm just looking at the side of my screen okay so i think what they what 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 they what they did is like created a bunch of blocks of size two, a bunch of blocks of size four, a bunch of blocks of size eight, then 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. And they have enough of these so that they that way they can satisfy every request um in like the most optimal way. Okay, I I don't think you're answering the question directly. So let me let me try to be a little more specific. So let's 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 look at the other function. So there's malloc and then there, what is the other function to Reclaim that memory allocated. Uh, free. Okay, and what does free take in its in its in its? The address, memory? like in like a pointer to the memory that you are going to free. Okay, so let's say that you pass it that pointer. Why don't you need to pass it the size of the amount of memory that that pointer the, was allocated? They for? actually malloc will alloc like store that size, um, like before before like like kind of before the um, the address, if that makes sense. If you have a heap and you're pointing to an address, the address like four to the left will store an integer of the size that uh, that pointer is currently pointing to. So then what free will do is just go back, like do some pointer arithmetic, see that the size that you're trying to free of this pointer is eight and it will free eight bytes. Right, but so why couldn't you put that together when I asked you about why does malloc allocate more memory? than the amount that you asked for. Well, I guess I was just overthinking it. You asked why malloc returns more than is necessary. And I guess I didn't, I don't see how the storing the size is like related because that they're still allocating like 16 bytes for a 10 byte uh, request, correct? Right, and you just said it needs metadata to store how big the size of the allocated memory region is. Okay. So that when it's freed, it can know, uh, so that extra space is to store metadata? Yeah, not all of it. Part of okay. it is. But yeah, you do need to to, to store that. I'm just concerned because um, it, malloc should come, malloc is the most basic part of C that you learn. And it should come instantly. Instantly. You don't need to, you're a bit stumbling over your words and mm -hmm. not putting the concepts together. Um, can you tell me what the, the stack is in the context of a C program? Um, sure. The stack is where you place, um, every process has a stack where it, the stack might grow. If you add frames to it, if, if you call functions, it will add stuff to the stack. And that's basically where the data for that a process uses, uses is stored. So data could be, um, like variables, uh, uh, variable storage, like L values kind of, um, um, yeah. What's an, what's an L value? Um, so when I said like variables, um, in your program, you have like, um, you're operating on variables like storage objects. So an L value is kind of, um, it's a buzzword that I've heard, but an L value is kind of, uh, like a binding, like the like it, like the left side of a statement, like basically a storage uh, object area. So it has it's associated with a memory address. What's the opposite of an Correct. L value? Uh, opposite of an L value would be R value, right hand value. Okay. 
And that might be. That so might how do be... I alloc how do I allocate something on the stack? Um, you don't allocate stuff on the stack. I would say when at compile time, it would create it would place um, items that you need on the stack. Um, and how? then the, I, I said at compile time, it would place stuff on the stack. So how it would do that is um, go through your, your I, I, I don't have a good answer for how the compiler would allocate stuff on the stack, but I so so let me time. let me give you an example. You're writing a program, and you want to, you have int main, a main method, right? And you you're just gonna have a main method, and that's it. No, no fancy classes, functions, structs, whatever. There's no classes in C, but structs, whatever. Let's say you want to allocate a variable x on the stack. How would you do that? An x is an int. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? Um, decrement my stack by four, which is the size in bytes that it would take to store an integer, are uh, like the integer x. What does that look um, like? What does the code look like? Um, I guess push pop. Um, would it just be a push? I don't. I'm not in a push onto. Like typically on a stack, you have push and pop operations like a stack data structure. But this yeah, but, is kind of different than a st typical, like a regular stack data structure. Right. Am I talking about a data structure or am I talking about memory operating system related Me memory concepts? So, okay, so yes, you are operating on system memory. So what you would do is at this, uh, you would say, um, the, typically the top of the stack, uh, there's a pointer that points to the top of the stack. That is fr um, the first available free address. Bro, it, it really looks like you're reading something, I'll be honest with you. I'm definitely not reading something. I'll look in the camera, straight at the okay, camera. Okay, yeah, look at but the camera. You would, so the stack points, the, 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 there's a pointer, like a stack pointer. Yeah. It, there, um, it points to the first available um, address. Mm -hmm. um, you would you would write your, you would store your integer, in this case, four bytes to this address. And then you would increment your stack pointer um, up or down, depending on the, like uh, if your stack grows up or down. So mm -hmm. if it grows down, you would decrement. You would decrement it by four. That would point to your new stack address. If okay. you want to, so it's then if you want to pop something, you would just increment your stack pointer up four, and okay. maybe clear the memory as well, set it to zero. Okay. Now you're kind of on the right track, but I'm asking for like practically when you're writing the C program, that's what's going on behind the hood. But yeah. how do you actually allocate X on the stack? Um, I don't know if the linker, this ties into what the linker does because the linker does all the, like, um, like the linker would assign addresses to like data and then you'd have a symbol table for all your variables, local variables, global variables, and they would all get assigned things on the stack. So let's say you have int X, right? You have an integer X, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to put it on the stack in a C program. What would I do in main? What would I write? You have an integer x and you want to put it on the stack? Yeah, that's right. Um, um, to put it on the stack, I think you would need to assign it a value because I think if you just have int x colon, it wouldn't get placed on the stack. It would be uninitialized and it would get placed in a different section in your um, elf like format, which would not be on the stack, but I'm not... 100% on that. No, it would still be all, all I'm really getting at is you just have to type int x. You can just type in x. Yeah. And, and the then compiler, compiler will um, allocate storage on the stack. Exactly. doesn't matter if it's initialized or uninitialized as long as it's in the main function. What if I, I want to allocate int x on the heap? How would I do that? You would in your C program write int x equals malloc and then size of int, um, size of int, yeah. Okay, and just int x? Um, okay, so malloc would return a pointer, so that would give you a com compiler error. Okay. Um, you would do int star x equals malloc, um, size, parentheses, size of x. Right. 
cool. Um, how would I allocate an array in C on the heap? Um, so arrays, yeah, you want to allocate an array. Um, so I think you didn't mention anything about this, like what the size of the array is. So maybe you don't want to, you want uh, like just, I mean, okay. So just your quite just answering your question. What I would do is the same exact thing. If it will, be, if you wanted an integer of array, like an integer array, same exact syntax. I would do int star x equals um, malloc size of x, and that's because like kind of pointers and arrays are you're operating on the same thing kind of. And if you wanted to add, um, if you wanted to like. If you wanted to allocate like a like a like a diff, like an array of size ten, let's say you would do int star x equals malloc ten times size of int, and that would reserve enough sp contiguous space for ten integers. Yeah, that's right. Okay, you're getting to the answer. It's just uh, it's slower than I expected. Sure. That and how long have you been using C professionally? Um, two, almost two years. Okay. Actually, um, like oh, about a year professionally, I would say, because the first year I didn't do a lot of C. And this is in helicopter safety software. Safety, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Very, I'm, yeah. I'm more nervous riding in helicopters. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you've gotten a year's worth of experience. Mm-hmm. Especially since I, you struggled with some of the explaining some of the malloc stuff. Now, maybe you know the malloc stuff, but it's just your communication skills need to be improved. Right. But right. that's that's what that's what I need you to to focus on, because you might know a lot more than is what's coming off in this short call. But if this was an interview, uh, it would be a no from me, uh, essentially. OK. Does that make sense? I, I hear you. Yeah. And you're I still young. You're still young in your career. So effectively, hopefully this is like a wake up call for you.